All right, so what's up, everybody? Pretty straightforward. We're going to do a quick tier list, or hopefully quick, of every single card in the set. And I say hopefully quick because there's like 80 cards to go through that are unique to Frostfall slash or in the set. Um, so let's just jump into it. All right, starting with Cryoling. Um, I think it's just good. Like, it's got okay attack stats with its effect, and it. Basically, it's a one-cost bridge. I think one-cost bridges are good, but I don't think that the cryo over line is crazy. Um, I'm also going to put the cryo, or sorry, the cryo scorch line. I'm put cryo corner is good. It's a decent bridge. It is going to potentially win you a late game situation, but it is weak to things like earthquake, boom bat, other just removal since they draw stay, draw step trigger. I don't think it's that great. I mean, 7 attack is fine, but I think it's just good. I don't think it's strong. Uh, Car Scorch, I'm going to put in the strong category. I think it's great at finishing a game. It's pretty powerful. It's got big stats. Even if you don't go all in with it and maybe hard ascend into it, uh, the option's always there to just dump your spear deck and then attack for three more. So I think that's pretty strong as a finisher. Uh, you don't want to get an early game, though. Early game is going to be kind of awkward to use. Catarant. I'm going to put Catarant in the strong category. It's a good regenerator. It's got weak stats, but there's a lot of synergy and frost with it where you can basically bring it back into play for free using a frost sticks and then potentially use other nexus abilities, etc. to just kind of combo with it. I think it's pretty good there. I'm going to put I will eat meh. Uh, I'm going to put meh. Like it, the first time I will eat connects, it will do really, really well where it just kind of board wipes your opponent. Every time after that, it's just a beat stick and it can get removed. It still has to connect things. Um, I'm going to put Matt. I don't think it's terrible, but I just don't think it's going to be that great. Uh, Snow Waddle, I think, is a future potential. It searches stuff. Uh, searches stuff that's Frost Thunder. If we get more Frost Thunder cards, it'd be really good. 2 4 body, it's all right. Maybe we'll see play in the future. Uh, next up, I think the uh, Hangawatt is just bad. Uh, it's. A defensive bridge the bridge is antithetical to what it's trying to do in terms of just nexusing a lot you can't really ascend into it well it has to stick on board to do something uh, i just don't think it's great uh i think emperor watt though is pretty strong i think the best way to do emperor watt is to do again like a catarant bridge cub keone like underworld combo or get into your underworld somehow and then rise it with a Keone in place. So you have stuff to Nexus. It's a board wipe for three, basically. You could always just like disenchant three from it to board wipe if you need to, if you're like behind. So I think that's always an option. It's a basically nuclear boom bat that destroys everything on your opponent's board if you need to. Uh, Ursicle. This allows you to search bears. It might have some future potential. I don't know if searching for Ursas right now is that great when Ursas aren't that good first coat i think it's good uh suppression kind of stops it but it will bounce things so if your opponent's trying to go tall with one thing it kind of sits there as like an illustrial version of shield of achilles that's way cheaper it will hopefully allow frost decks to ascend into a two drop with it you don't need to play it in bears for it to be useful so i don't mind it uh i think abominers is pretty good now bears are still kind of bad but as far as the ursas go it's probably the best ursa in the game it's definitely behind Ursco, but they're all not that great. I think I kind of, you know, I think I'm going to put it under meh. Actually, it's a little weak. Like, again, you need the Ursas. The Ursas aren't that strong. Uh, Papa Bear, Glassy Ursa. I think I'm going to put Glassy Ursa in good, but on the low end of good, only because it's a permanent suppression. So once it enters that battle, it will permanently suppress something, even if that something lives. So that is relevant. It, you can get it out pretty quick by doing some shenanigans with Ursa Den, like Nexus, etc. But otherwise, it's just a giant beat stick. Giant beat sticks aren't always great, but I think there's some uniqueness to it and some abilities to get out fast that it's, it's half decent. Uh, Tadflow, I'm going to put under meh. Uh, the fact that it's locked to one frost or frost frost makes it a little clunky, so you have to use it in frost deck. I don't think there's any frost decks that you want to special out a two drop immediately with to like really do a ton yet um like your targets are what moralith uh shiveror polaracne permafrog none of those really stand out to me as stuff that you want to accelerate out right now maybe polaracne but it's only one target so i'm gonna put a meh 
I don't even know if I want to put it under future potential because it's still definitely usable right now. It's just not great. You could do some shenanigans with like infrostics and stuff and bring it back from the under with the infrostics to constantly chain specials. So there's potential now, but we'll have to see what comes out. Uh, I think Permafrog is just bad. It's if you're a Yu Gi Oh player, swords are revealing light on a body. It dies to removal, it dies to anything frost and fire enchanted. Those are pretty common enchants, I'm going to think, with Frostfall and Lavalith and other fire stuff floating around. I think fire is going to be really like common to use things like Chains of Prometheus, so I think it's always going to just get attacked over on a two drop. I think it's bad. Um, I, I'm going to put Frostmite under good here. Because I think people are going to underestimate the fact that minus five defense is a lot. So that gets rid of every single defensive threat on one, a lot of defensive threats on two drops. It's going to be pretty solid. And remember, reducing stats is always better than buffing stats because you could play Frostmite, reduce stats of something defensive, and if you have another Lush in play, they can both have an option to attack it, potentially getting over things like Shield of Achilles. Uh, next up, Polar Acne. I'm kind of meant on this guy. I think it's going to be decent as maybe like a tech card against some decks where reducing things to make this a giant wall is going to be relevant. However, the fact that it can't really attack efficiently is kind of there. Um, I'm actually, I think it's going to be low end of good. Like maybe with some more support for like arachnid stuff or like we have more things that drop stats to make its destruction more relevant in the future would be better. But I think it's at least good right now. Yep. We'll see. All right, uh, S tier, Lycan Form, 100%. This is the best card in more Frost decks. It just one cost search two. That's busted. Granted, it's locked to more Frost, but it's probably the best. No, I'm not going to say probably. It is definitely the best more Frost in the game. You're going to run three of those no matter how many more Frost you're running with other ones. It's deck thinning. It finds two cards. It lets you kind of set up in this combo to send into other stuff. Like, it's just great. You always want to see that in your open hand playing more Frost. S tier. Indus, I'm going to put strong. Uh, the low key part with Indus is the fact that it destroys stuff when it's destroyed in battle means your opponent has to set stuff first and then attack into it, allowing you to destroy something before they can chain it, which is relevant. So it's kind of like P gusting on your opponent's turn rather than your turn. And if your opponent leaves it in play, you can ascend your A bomb into it and then disenchant your A bomb to bring it right back. So I think it's really, really strong. Put stuff in your underworld to set up for a bomb power and kione stuff i think is really strong just not quite as strong as lichen because lichen's the the big setup for it uh but yeah uh more frost a bomb the payoff i think is also really strong it gets really really quickly it can ramp up in power it can special stuff from the underworld that are also more frost if we get more more frost in the future only gonna be better i think it's really good and it is the payoff i i think it's really really powerful Terraform, I'm going to put under meh because I think Morfrost is going to really kind of be focusing on running just getting A-bombs in as much as possible and then special casting from the Underworld if you're lucky. But I think with the, with the consistency of the deck is you're going to be doing things like Lycan, grab a couple of Lustrals, Kione, Lycan again, grab a couple things, and you're always going to grab like A-bomb and stuff and then you're going to play A-bomb and probably going to remove A-bomb. You're going to play A-bomb again, remove it. So I don't think Terraform is really ever going to be have the like the time to be played to use its effect because you're either dumped everything in your underworld already so you can't activate its effect to uh, protect your more frost or you're just not going to have the time to play it down because you have other more frost that are going to do better things than it frigid cub i think frigid cub is going to be on the high end of good uh next celestial is always pretty powerful it's a next celestial with pseudo regen i don't know if that's going to be good enough but it definitely has a lot of combo potential with things like cataract to regen two to spirit deck and put one on the board allowing you to do kind of shenanigans with either stadium decks in frost or aggro stuff or combo into like big three drops from just like kione underworld shenanigans but i think it's gonna be pretty good especially when you can just like kind of bring it with an infrost sticks back into play nexus recover one from that infrost sticks ability so it's Kind of a one cost reanimate i think it's good shiver roar i'm gonna also put good um the room projection is nice mount of boris buffs are good it's still a stadium based deck 
If stadiums become really good with a lot of stadium cards in this set, then your opponent's just going to be able to play a stadium to remove the stadium, remove the protection, and potentially attack over this, or just remove like Earthquake, etc. Like, it's almost a Sonic Core, but I think it's a little bit pros cons. So I just think it's not going to be as great as people think it might be. I don't know. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this comes out being a strong card with like a Stadium Frost deck, but I think the more Stadium decks we have, the weaker it will be because you just remove the Stadium, then it's just a beater in essence. Arctorus, um, I'm going to say Matt on this, um, probably somewhere around there. It's nice it's a one cost that you can kind of beat over larger things with by expending one to two spirits for, but that is pretty expensive and it still has to connect. If it gets shielded after you've already expended two, it's going to really hurt because now your opponent just shielded for two, you lost three, so it's it's not great. Uh, it, it's nice to have that option, like if there's a way to tutor it better than uh, Narpoon, then sure. But right now, I don't think it's that great. I think it's at least useful as like a one or two of in a rare situation that you need to get over a two drop with basically, but we'll see where it floats. Bob. Uh, Bob is, I think Bob is good. Maybe Matt, like, again, you have, like, this Kione and Frostix combo stuff, so you can potentially, like, and Frostix a Bob into play to lock down two runes, and then Kione and Frostix back, and then using Frostix to bring something out, and then attack over, yada yada. But I think that's good. It might be a little slow, though. Uh, I'm gonna put a high end of Matt. Um, like, it's decent, but, I don't know. I, I think it needs some work. Okay. And Frostix, I've been talking about this. I think Frostix is amazing. Like the fact that you can two cost any one cost Frost Elestral into play without it being a casted effect, like an invoke counter, so it can't be really responded to right now in the game is really good. There's so many ways to just like Catarant cast for free, Bridge Cub recovers one. You can use Kione to bring it back and do it again to another Elestral. So I think it's going to be a late game powerhouse for like self mill stuff. I don't know if Self Mill is going to get there just yet, but it's always going to be able to bring back these one cost really efficiently. And a lot of them will come back and refund themselves a chunk. So in a lot of cases, it's a free or a one cost reanimate, and then you can special over it or just normal over it. Like there's a lot of really good things you can do. So I think it's going to be really powerful this set. Moralith. I think it's high end of mint right now, or... I'm gonna say future potential. If there was more self mill enablers where you want to run like 25, 30 Leshals in your deck, Avalanche, and then play Moralith, and then do something from your underworld, it'll get really good. Right now, it's a 6-4 beater that sometimes can't come out as a 6-4 beater for one. Sometimes it's a 6-4 beater that you can just normal cast. Most of the time, it's not gonna be online. It will kind of help you get from behind and against like aggressive one drop decks, I guess. But I think it's got to wait for some potential down the line. Peloth, I think Peloth is just weaker than Rummagem in nine out of ten cases. I think there's a place for it with Rummagem, or in certain decks that Rummagem doesn't fit as well into. But the fact that you don't get the search off an Ascension, so the things you want to basically use with this are like Giga Flora. So if you send this into Gigaflora, well, then you don't get the search for it, but it does great with things like our Neanderthal even to go dump a Titanostock, but if you send it from Neanderthal, I think it's just clunky in that the trigger doesn't work from Ascension, so I'm going to put it under meh. I see it being used, but Rummagem, I think, is just better in most cases. Uh, Neanderthal, I think, is also kind of meh. It's got a really powerful effect, but it's low stats for a two-drop, that you have to ascend into. The Titanostock, you don't want to play with it, so I'm only really focusing on you playing it without Titanostock, where it's a six attack and it needs to destroy something, but then it's really good. If you can kind of set up where you have like Chains of Prometheus, but then you have less back row to protect the stuff that you're trying to ascend into to get into it, we'll see where it goes, but I don't think it's going to be that great. I do see it having some kind of like usage and just that it's discard effect is strong but otherwise i'm eh on it Psy nectar uh Psy nectar i don't think it's that great with so i don't think poison nectar is going to trigger that often i don't think that's worth running in a main deck ever even with Psy nectar but the payoff for poison tipped arrow with this thing is going to be pretty massive and it's going to have potential with whatever point poison tunic is so i think 
it's going to be really good in the future. Right now, I think it's kind of bad because it's only got one card it combos with. Um, so I don't see you using it consistently with uh, Poison Tipped Arrow to do much at all. But I could see how come, you know, Poison Tunic with more options to cast things to send it quicker would be better. It's going to be really hard. Like, you want to send this on your turn to use Wasp Ibe's basically Omni Counter Prevention. And you can't really do that consistently right now because you have counter runes that trigger it. So if we can get an Invoke or Artifact or Divine or something that's... Tw Tunic's probably an Artifact. Then it would be good because you can use it on your turn to do something. Wasp Ivy, I think is pretty strong. I know I just kind of rattled on Dynectar. Uh, I'm going to actually put it under good. I think similar reasons. I think it's really strong. When you can get it out, but it's not going to be consistently getting out because you have to either hard ascend it or special send it off Synectar. That's difficult. But if you can do it on your turn with Poison Tunic in the future, then it's going to be pretty strong. So just go ascend. I'm now immune to counter into this card. Punch over something. Kind of like in a Sonicor vein, but you can quick ascend into it off a of one drop. That sounds pretty good. Dear Flora, uh, it's. I think it's going to be a bit better than base set. It might see a little bit of play now with the more Earth Recursion stuff that we have, Hailoth, etc. But I don't see it being super powerful. I just see it seeing possible play. I'm going to put it, eh. I think it'll probably see more play than Iwily, but less play than the rest of those guys. So I'll put it there. Gigaflora. I think Gigaflora is in the strong category. It's a card that if you don't answer it, then it's just going to run away with the game. At 7 defense, is pretty sturdy. You're going to have to use generally like Earthquake or Boombat or Kinleo to remove it. It's not ever going to run into a shield. And it's just going to bring back things like Panzer, uh, Viserys, Victorious. It's these big attack threats in one that you want to remove Gigaflora. But you're also getting beat down by all these other things over time. And it's not going to run into things like Shield of Achilles ever. So I think it's going to be really, really good. Uh, it just needs a deck to host it. And that's why I'm not really putting in S tier. Because I think it needs a little bit more help to be efficient enough to be played. But I do think it's a very powerful card. Uh, Panzer. I think this is on the high end of good. Before the Nexus changes, I think this would be a strong card or an S tier card. Where you could just Nexus and then re-enchant it. But that doesn't work anymore. So now it's just kind of a big wall that recovers through Nexus like Frigicub. But I think think it's a bit better than Frigid Cub because Earth has a little bit better I think Nexus potential with like equal inks and this perhaps. I'm not 100% sure but I do think it's pretty good. Um, Wasp Ivy might be a bit better than it though. Uh, Mustation. I'm not convinced by this guy. Uh, a 6 attack crab, sure, that goes in defense after attacking is pretty eh. Now you can protect it with counter runes and stuff but at the same time you could just be playing like Viserys. In my opinion. Um, it beats over anything it needs to beat over though is relevant. It's You don't want to sit into attack position as an attack position wall because that's not really going to do much more than a defense position wall. And I think defense position wall with 6 defense is better than an attack position wall at 6 attack. Huh. Uh, Ziprong. Mm, I don't even want to put in our future potential but I think it's I think it's just bad. The issue with Z-Prong, it's not necessarily a bad card, but the fact that it only works when you're already kind of ahead with a bunch of wide attack position board stuff, like, it only needs to be in attack position, I understand, but like, I don't see it being super strong. If we had Ignectars in Earth, which we don't because Zy Nectar exists and that's the next form, I would see it seeing some play with that, but I don't think it's going to be that great. Uh, Vertolith, I think, is a future potential card along with Moralith, where it's like, if you can have an invoke deck that's just dumping earth on your first turn and then you play Vertilith behind it, I could see seeing play. The fact though that it's best on turn one and going into game one, you don't know if you're going to go first or not, I don't think it's that great. I mean, it's big recovery is good. It can recover, like you can just rise from the ashes it and still recover a little bit. Like big defense is relevant, but once it's on board, it doesn't do anything. And that's, I think, my big hang up on it. Um, I'm going to actually put on the bottom future potential there because, again, once it's in play, it's just a big defense wall that doesn't do anything. It needs to do something more than just recover four to, I think, see consistent more play. But it might have potential if you have, like, an invoke-based deck that just dumps earth and then you can play this, recover a ton of earth. 
follow up with Ambrosia and stuff after that. Like, I could see it potentially doing something with you. Uh, Smokey, I'm going to put this really high up in future potential. It's currently really bad. Um, Waste of Special Cast It off the top of my head. Rise from the Ashes, Caprifume. That's it. I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Like, oh, Exalt Flare. But I don't think you want a Nexus of Vault, Exalt Flare into a Smokey just to draw some cards. So if there's more Fire Special Cast, this card's going to go pretty crazy. But there's no way to really use it right now. So I don't think it's that great. I think it's got like absurd future potential. But right now, I you can't convince me otherwise. Uh, Caprifume, I'm going to put, I think, on the meh. So my issue with Caprifume is you need to draw lots of cards to use it efficiently. Because you're going to go empty hand. Like, let's say you try to do, like... Exalt Flare into Caprifume into another one drop fire. You need a lot of fire lustrals basically. A lot of one drop fire lustrals that are worth playing. And there's not a ton of one drop fire lustrals worth playing. Like Necrof, sure, Kinleo, Comagma, maybe. You're going to probably run Smokey with this card and realize that that just feels really rough, but it does fix the hand problem. I think it's a cool card that might see some better play. It's not bad right now. But the fact that you need so many cards to make it work consistently and you need to stay in play, I'm not convinced by it. Uh, Comagma, I think, is probably good. Like, four attacks, cycle a card is decent. I don't know really what you're playing in Fire to make it worthwhile doing that. And it potentially sets up a lot of this Frost Reanimator stuff that I've been, like, chalking up on that I think is going to be pretty strong. Uh, maybe in the future with like Golden Apple and this and some other discard outlets, you can make an Underworld Recursion like Reanimator deck work. And so I think right now it's a four attack, one drop that cycles a card. That's not bad. I think that's good. I just don't. Maybe it's like a two of kind of thing in your deck. Exalt Flare. Um, I think this is a future potential card. I don't know if there's enough right now to make Exalt Flare worth running consistently, and we need a better Fire Divine Rune for it than Hephaestus. So if Hephaestus gets better or we get a new Fire Divine Rune, Exalt Flare I think will do better, and some more two drops that are worth going into besides what we're about to talk. Lavalith and Caprifume, Leonite are your targets. Waspire combo is a potential. Again, potential. Lavalith. Uh, S tier. <laughs> like, I think Lavalith might be the best card in the set. Uh, it basically will always two for one when you set it up, unless your opponent Gorgons it on the spot because you're joining their Gorgons, but if you hit something else and they have to Gorgons it to protect the other thing, well, that's a win in my books. Like, it's always going to generally answer a rune in play, whether it's Divine Rune or Face Down, and then attack over something that's a one drop in play. So it's kind of always going to two for one, or most always two for one. It never does anything less than one for one, I don't think. Uh, it's just a really good card. It's, a, it's I think, going to be a really good threat, and it's going to be splashing a lot of decks because it's like P-Gust on steroids. Um, the casting restriction's not that difficult to get out. It's like Royal, but it's an Lustral Body, which is awesome. You don't run it in Nexus decks, I don't think, but anything that's not running Nexus and Divine Runes consistently, you just slap it in there as like a two or three of, and it's a nice little tech piece against a lot of decks, if not all decks. Uh, Dratagua. I think Dratagua is also going to be S tier. I think Water really was waiting for a good receiver where it has a really powerful Nexus uh, Aphros that can just draw you two cards every turn if you can keep it in play. Uh, Poseidon Nexus is one Water, so you can just like play this in Poseidon and just recover a bunch. Um, you could just re-enchant it over a course of a turn or two if you need more recovery so that you're always kind of getting a little bit back. You get a stadium and play with it. It's going to be a really big defensive wall. Four defense is relevant. I think Dratog was actually amazing. Like, not even a joke. I think Dratog was really, really good and amazing. And I want to put an S tier. I could see why someone might put it in strong instead of S. But I think it's really good. And I think there's going to be a lot of really fun things you can do with it. And one of those things is going to be Lockagon. I'm going to put Lockagon lower than S tier because Dratog was the enabler. Lockagon's a payoff. And I think you can play Dratagua in a lot more decks than Lockagon. The Lockagon, you can destroy stuff when you recover. We have lots of tools to special cast, recovery, Elestrals, and Ambrosias and stuff like that in this set. 
with rise from the depths we can rise from the or rise from the ashes really just rise from Chautauqua or Sluggle ascend to Lockgon do it again Ambrosia ascend into like a Sluggle from your hand like there's lots of ways to just recover water so I think Lockgon's gonna be really good as like a finisher and like a stall deck so you play a stall deck with like Chautauqua Sluggle maybe a Quackler to his backup and a bunch of counter runes and just recover stall and then late game you do like Lockgon Rise from combo ambrosia, whatever you need to do, recover a bunch, pop a bunch of things. I think Lockon is really strong in that regard. Corbral, we have already seen a little bit of Corbral in uh, app tournament, and I think it's decent. Like when it hits, it's amazing. Like running one Corbral in like a foamy search deck where your opponent attacks into or uh, foamy special Corbral out from foamy, check their back row before your turn starts. That's pretty good. Otherwise, it kind of bricks, but. And once your opponent knows you're playing it, they're not going to really bluff much. So I'm going to put her meh for now. I could see it seeing play, but not that great. Horebrum. Um, I, I think it's just bad. I think it's kind of slow. It's clunky. Like, cool, your opponents can't set stuff, but if they've already set stuff, well, they've got it. And then its defense is still kind of low, even with the buff from you having to face the set. Like, if you go first, you do Tad Puff. Ascending off a of Tad Puff, you're gonna get this at max to what, like seven defense, six defense? Like, you're not gonna be able to get it super high on defense. And then what do you do with it? You try to ascend out of it or something? Like, it's clunky, it's gummy, it doesn't really do much on its own. And if you do it anything after like turn one, it's almost useless. I don't think you run it in your deck. Uh, Narpoon. It's a searcher out of element. If it was in element, it'd be strong. I think searchers. Out element are good. I'm gonna put it somewhere over here. I haven't been really keeping up with orders of cards, but I think it's a good card. It's a searcher. It'll get you lichen form. It'll get you in frost sticks and stuff. So I think that's pretty good. Searchers are just generally good. Whale ants. Oh man, we had such conversation on whale ants. Just because of that conversation, I'll put under good. I think more frost is gonna be relevant. It destroys the entire more frost deck all at once if it connects. If it connects, it's great. It, otherwise, it, I mean, people are saying, oh, you can see your opponent's deck. I don't think that's super relevant because you generally know what they're on. I could see it being good, just not great. It's going to be a good sideboard against things like Morphrost, as I mentioned. Otherwise, yeah. Uh, Bubloon. I think Bubloon is... I think it'll be good. Like, if you can special cast it, get some extra Bubloons out, stuff like that, I think it will see, like, some decently strong play. Possibly, like... In a magical Christmas land, you get three Bubloon out. You still only have seven attack on the Bubloons, right? Because it'd be three, five, seven. Yeah, that's not crazy. So you want to play behind like Galaxy or like other water attackers, but there's not any new water attackers in the set, except I guess maybe Narpoon, like behind a Narpoon, but search something with Frost off Narpoon. Yeah. There needs to be, I think, some more four attack things in water to make Bubloon better. I don't think it's like amazing right now. But it's probably good, like especially off of Foamy, and then you follow it up with something else. Funglow. I don't think Funglow is that great. I'm going to put under Future Potential. If we get more Thunderstorm support, either more Thunderstorms of titles or more Illustrious that do things with Thunderstorm, I could see an argument for playing Funglow. But right now, like, one attack boost, not that great. It's super tiny. It's really just there to use Glow. So I think it's got future potential. Brontoclo, I think, is probably in the good category, though. No, I'm gonna put, I, it, it needs more. Like, thunder, it needs more Thunderstorm. Like, we need another Thunderstorm or more thing or more reason to run a Thunderstorm-based deck. Like, once you have reason to run Thunderstorm and Unglo and Brontoclo, then it's going to be really good. It's kind of like this suppression finisher, special caster thing that's going to be super unique and interesting. But it needs some help. But I don't think it's like future potential bad. Like bad. I just think it needs a little bit more work. I could see it seeing play though, in like some new thunder deck. Uh, Riceros coming into Frostfall. I think right now in base set it's at future potential. I think in Frostfall it's still in future potential, because uh, I think there's still gonna be a lot of thunder floating around. Now the more elements we get and the less thunder decks you run up consistently, the better Riceros will get. I think it's kind of weak right now. And I think when we get more elements and there's less thunder in the meta, Riceros will be good. Uh, Ricer Ridge. 
So I spoke about this. My main issue with Rice Ridge is he has four attack. The fact that he can't really stay in attack position, negating attacks and then crack back over five attackers is pretty relevant. So the fact that it's a 4-6, I think is the weakest part of it. If it had better stats, it'd be really good where you just negate attacks and then start attacking back over things. But as it is, I don't think it's going to be that great. Maybe if Rice or Rice Arrow sees more play, you might run one or two of it as like a gotcha moment, but I don't think that's great. Uh, Platypulse, I think, is somewhere in the meh category for one reason and one reason alone. Let's say turn one, you go Platypulse, Zeus. Okay, cool. Defense position, Elestral. You Platypulse can't take can't attack over anything. And then if you use Zeus, you're producing Platypulse's bonus. Like... I think it's just going to be like anything you try to do with Platypulse is just going to lead your opponent to go, okay, I'll just play my defense Elijah, I'll play my Ash Rabbit, or I'll misenchant something. And it's like, well, Platypulse is useless. So anything, the Platypulse goes into anything defensive, it's literally doing nothing. It can't really attack over anything ever. And if it can attack over something, it's going to crash because it goes to minus four. Pseudo five attack, it's going to crash and do like a Necro for something. whoop de doo I don't think that's great. Uh, Nemisail. What about Nemisail under Strong? I know a lot of people think Windex is going to be re really powerful. Uh, it's searchable, etc. But I don't think it's as S tier as Tartakwa because similar to Katarant, its stats are kind of mediocre right now. But it's in a really good element for Nexus in general. So maybe we get some more Wind Nexus tools. Like we'll go into Tower Winds later. Exaltair is still there. A little bit more, and I think it's going to be up there. But I think it's right now just fresh. Hard. Error Sail. I'm gonna put this under. I know I riffed on a lot in my video going over it, but Terra Sail I think is a good card with not enough payoff right now. Like it's got good stats. If there's if there's a way to make Wind and Water work really well with a Nexus strategy combined, like at Christmas Land we have a Diviner that's both Wind and Water or something. Like it'll be better. But right now the fact that it can only do like it needs to be in a wind deck but wind decks have better nexus tools it it's water doesn't do anything right now i think if you get more reasons to use the water with it and you have a water wind deck or something sure but i'm actually going to demote it back to meh like it needs a little bit of work or a little bit of help uh fin dust so i think fin dust i want to put it in like the strong tier but i think it's a future potential card because it does isn't chance to search any wind rune which is really good but i don't think there's enough wind runes to that are good enough to play with it that synergize with it well enough yet to make that worthwhile. Like you can play Aeolus and then a Tower of Winds to it to not ascend it and trigger its effect. That's clunky. So like when we get Wind Invoke Runes and we have like ways to start like combos with it, it's gonna be really powerful. Right now, it's not that great. The best thing you do with it is like play it, search Aeolus or play Aeolus, search it to search a Wind Rune of some kind and then try to use another wind to on your next turn, Tower of Winds that you just search off of it, stuff like that. But I don't know if that's good enough because you still have to find the Elestral to ascend and have it in your hand. Once we get some more tools for it, it's going to be great though. Haibu Fin. Uh, tsunami on Elestral. I think that just makes it good by default. You do have to send into it, and I don't know if there's any decks that... It's just it does. You have to make a deck around it. It doesn't slot into anything right now. That that's my concern with it. Uh, I think it's because of that. Is we'll just put it under good. Give it some time. Maybe there's a deck that can really use it efficiently, and I think it'd be good. Uh, maybe even with like my station or something. Like I don't know. But it needs a deck to slot into, and there's no deck right now that runs Earthwind except for like Spina Section and again. Once it has a deck home and stuff to play with it, I think it'd be pretty good. Uh, Nimbug. Nimbug's just good. Like, the fact that you can just quick ascend into, um, Syracun, now Charcoon as well, I think is good. And it's gonna get better if we get another Coon of some kind. And uh, it's just, it's a 1-1 one -one that is as good as the 2-drops. The 2-drops are all pretty much accelerants to a good 3-drop. So, I think it's good. However, Charcoon's just bad. I know I just talked about Nimbug. I think Nimbug is a good card. Charcoon is not good you need so much fire and board which then you're gonna have less fire in, in your spirit deck to use flamma moth with like you you're running a festus now to get enough 
like you need another or another fire lustral plus a stadium and like it's just too clunky maybe if we get more fire uh divine runes that work better with it it'll be better and you go nimbug into charcoon right away and then go to flame moth really fast but there's way better ways to get flame moth out i think it's just bad and i don't really see much potential for it honestly i think there's so many other ways to play flame moth that this is not a great bridge Flame Moth, though, I'm going to put into Strong. If you get out early, it's going to be a monster. Where it just... Oh, Earthquake doesn't work. Shield doesn't work. Like, it's going to do a ton of work. If you get out late, it's still a decent beater. Uh, it's going to eat fire like no tomorrow. So if we had fire recovery, it'd be better. But I think Flame Moth is going to be a deck to kind of reckon with in like either a high end of like a Win Nexus deck or some kind of like Win Toolbox with a fire sub package for things like chains maybe lava lith uh this etc so i think flamma moth is very good that way break a doodle i think is meh like it's gonna be like i could see a one of as a toolbox in wind to counter some specific cards here and there but the cards that it counters i don't see being super viable uh just quickly like off what we have here like it stops a panzer it'll stop like a cataran but it just attacks over cataran so that doesn't really count it'll stop an earth coat um stop a platy pulse like it does some things but i don't think it does enough it might see some play for the deadline but right now i think it'll see plays like a one of in windex so you can just search it and potentially deal with an illustrial with an annoying effect break a doodle i don't I don't know. I, I'm going to put it over here. I think it's around maybe there-ish. Yeah, I don't think it's as playable as something like Iwilly. It can suppress multiple Lestrals. That's cool. You got to ascend into it still. It can burn things short itself to connect to make the burn of the attack. So you're just burning more wind and wind loves to burn itself. You run out of stuff and then it tries to attack and deal damage. Uh, just Put it this way, Javlantis doesn't see play. This is kind of like a weird Javlantis. Slightly better, like Javlantis would be under just bad. This I think has some potential, just not enough to make it good. A uh, Galaxair, I think this is really good. Switching stats for free, I think is really, really powerful. Its stats are definitely lower than Sorlet for sure. But you can use it on your own things, on opponent's things, mess with stats, do good combat with it. I'm going to put it somewhere up in the, like, there in the good category. I think it's got a lot of potential. Kione. Um, I would put it in S tier. I think it's just going to be, like, top end is strong. Uh, any good Frost deck that uses one drops, that wants to recur one drops consistently, is going to use Kione. So it's going to bring back in Frost decks for more special casts. It's going to bring, I don't know, Bob out, or, like, if... The better you can get at putting things into the underworld, there's not a ton of great ways to do that right now outside of like Indus or maybe Morolith or Avalanche. Once we get more ways to put things into our underworld directly, like a Foolish Burial type effect, it's going to be amazing. Till then, it's just going to be strong because it's going to be used to just recur winning game pieces like Abominable, maybe Frigid Cubs, Catarans, etc. Just keep recovering and stall, stuff like that. So it's really strong. We need some more tools for it. A Scepter of Kione. Special cast things when you destroy stuff with it. Uh, I, I don't... I could see you running like one or two of them for sure. But I don't think it's going to be that great because it's an artifact. It has to connect to make the attack worth it. It doesn't do anything but stat buffs without Kione in play. Because it's got a pretty powerful effect. to just special cast a one drop from your hand. So I, I think it's... It's not that great right now. Maybe it gets better in the future, but yeah. Avalanche is like the poster child, I think, for future potential here. Uh, if Stealth Mill and Frost comes worthwhile playing, it's going to be great. If Mill in general becomes good, it's going to be worth playing with like Humbus and stuff. However, both those I don't think are super worth doing just yet. But there's a lot of potential there in just self-milling five, playing more or less, milling another five, and doing some underworld shenanigans with those ten cards you just dumped into your underworld. So eventually I think Avalanche comes very strong right now, not so great. 
a blizzard kind of like a thunderstorm with upside and downside you can't chain to it but it can't destroy face ups i'm gonna put it under meh because we have other tools now we'll have chains of prometheus etc to deal with counter runes but it is nice to be able to kind of invoke speed pop something without a response at all like if you play this and pop um a gorgon's gaze that can't divine blessing or something because you can't chain to it so I think in that case it's gonna be good like if divine blessing sees a lot of play stuff like that it'll be pretty useful it's a pros conscious thunderstorm i think thunderstorm is still slightly better than it because you can play thunderstorm going second have nothing for your opponents to mess with and it's the same but if you're going like turn three or four and you don't want them interacting with it it's nice to have mountains of boreas as far as stadiums go stadiums are kind of meh i think mountains of boreas has enough support in kind of like this weird frost like underworld recursion spam to get like frigid cubs out and stuff like that where it might be in like the fully forest category where it's good not great i can see one or two being run you have things like shiver roar which might be relevant i'll put it in the good that's where i put fully forest as well in my opinion uh circle of sky is still sitting there with future potential what the potential is is lots more receive effects get lots more receive effects and different divine runes and stuff it'll be really good Gotta wait till that happens though. Ambrosia Cornucopia. So, this might be a shock, like everyone's gonna assume I'm gonna put it up here. In reality, Ambrosia Cornucopia is probably in like the back end of good to meh. Um, early game, it's just two cost draw one, which is really bad. Mid game, it's a free draw one, which is decent. That's solid, like it gives you a new option. And it combos with Taya and Ladagon. And late game, it could be a recover five, but you're never gonna get there. It's probably gonna basically be like a draw one, recover one, and use it to trigger Jataya or Ladagon. So I think it's good, not great, but it does make fruit a whole lot better as deck. Like it pushes fruit up a bunch of tiers, but in general, it's not this amazing card. It's just decently good, solid. You need to run three of it if you're running it which is a deck restriction building. It's taking slots away from other things you might want to play, but it's got a lot of like strong uses in things like fruit, potentially like with the Vertilith, etc. So I think it's good. Stoke the Forge, I'm not convinced by Stoke the Forge yet. I think it's got a lot of future potential if Volcanic Forge becomes more playable, which it's definitely more playable than base set with things like Comagma, uh, some other stuff, but Lavalith even. But until we get some better one drops to search with it, I don't think it's like as good as Aeolus might be in Win, where Win has all these really versatile effects, and we didn't get much fire this set. So, or the fire lushless set, I should say. But I see it being really good in the future. Rise from the depths, I'm gonna put it into like middle of good because it's a really powerful effect with lots of good water one drops that it wants to get from the underworld back into play. However, you do need Atlantis in play to play it making it a little bit clunky. However, it's a cheap, efficient, Monster Reborn effect. I think that makes it really good. We'll just need to see some cards down the line that work better with it. All right, next up, Race to the Top. I'm gonna put it somewhere around here. I think it, I don't think it fits into Thunder Nexus, which is the best Thunder deck right now, so it needs a new home. Maybe with Jolton, etc., it'll get there, but it needs some work still. It needs some potential. It needs a little bit added to it to make it worthwhile playing. If we get another Thunder deck that uses Stadium consistently, it'll be good. Power of the Winds, I think, is pretty strong. Um, and it will only get better over time because we get more cards that want to basically quick ascend out of win next to thing with Aeolus and stuff like there's so much you can do with it you, like again you can fin dust at, like if you, basically you play like one Elestral you go grab Tower of the Winds with fin dust and then use Tower of Winds to quick ascend that to something like there's tons of combo potential there to just quick ascend into big wind Elestrals I really like the card I think it's gonna do so well in this format just getting flame moth out maybe we see like some Yankee pantera like shenanigans with a one of pantera in the deck kind of thing but i think tower of the winds like just an invoke that nexus is for one with upside is really good and i think it's better than circle of the sky by a lot i think the fact that you can get flame moth out with this is gonna make it 
really strong because Flying Moth is really strong. There's some other shenanigans you might be able to do with it in terms of like triggering receive effects and then ascending, stuff like that. Uh, Sandstorm. I think Sandstorm is... I think it's meh because it's expensive. Two cost Tsunami that if doesn't affect Earth basically that has upside, which is cool, but I think it's kind of expensive. Wind Earth is a little expensive. There's no deck that runs in yet. If we get a deck that runs in better, sure. Uh, I think this card's kind of bad. Oh, I'll put it in future. Mm, I'll put this Poison Nectar in future potential. I think it's a good sideboard card. That's all it really is. And even in sideboard, it's maybe a two of. You don't want to use so many slots because it only works on draw effects. There's not a ton of really good draw effects we use in the game outside of like the fruit stuff with your Taya. Uh, what else draws? Not like Nature of the Gods. Like that doesn't see a ton of play right now. All right. Uh, Divine Blessing. I think Divine Blessing is a little bit weaker than Chains because you do need a board state to use it. However, stopping things like Earthquake are going to be relevant. Tower of the Winds will be relevant. It's a g amazing sideboard card, I think, and you need Divine Runes to run with it as well to make it really worthwhile. So I think it's mad just because it's clunky, but it's in the right deck, it's amazing. Fans Prometheus, I'm going to put under strong because we are in a counter meta. It stops counters at counter speed, which is really good. Now, the more chains Prometheus get run, the less it's going to be good because are going to be playing less chains like less counter runes but i think because counter runes are so strong they'll still see a significant play even with chains in the format to check them um but it will lead to a lot of blowouts i think where your opponent's like relying on a gorgons or something that they can't actually get off but yeah uh ursa den people love bears i'm going with the future potential it's expensive it's costly it doesn't do a ton there's some shenanigans you can do but maybe Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, Fully Forest, I'm going to put that up in good just because it's probably the best stadium in the game. Volcanic Forge goes future potential with Soak the Forge. Atlantis is going to go into good because of Rise from the Depth. Uh, Mount Olympus goes with Race to the Top. And I think Aeolia is future potential still. So that is the end of the tier list. Let me just give you guys a full view of it real fast. All right, so that's where we ended up with my tier list. We'll see come, you know, tournaments and stuff where it landed, but I think I did a good job here. Maybe, hopefully. Uh, just don't bring up the Thunder Nexus is the tier clip ever again. See you guys next one. Hope you guys like this. This is a long one, so like and subscribe if you're still here because that was a lot to talk about. Have a great one.